rolling here. So again, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are going to talk to you all about travel to Dominica today, which is uh, an island in the Caribbean. And I'm very, very excited to share all kinds of things with you about this incredible place. Um, and the flow for tonight's event is gonna, you know, we'll, we'll introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about, you know, our, our background and where we're coming in from, and then uh, talk about, you know, different aspects of Dominican geography, landscape, culture, um, different elements of the, the, you know, cultural influences and history. And then we'll kind of take a virtual trip by following the itinerary that we offer to Dominica. So you'll have a chance to uh, kind of see the different places and destinations and activities and all the different things on offer in Dominica. And then we'll talk about the cuisine and, and you know, different kinds of fresh foods available and go over general travel tips um, and yeah, questions and answers at the end. So that kind of gives you a little outline of how today will go. And we'll aim for the event to be about an hour, um, give or take a little bit, uh, you know, as, as we go. Um, so that's that and with no further ado, we'll get started with some introductions. So my name is Laura Ham. Uh, I'm the co-owner of Traverse Journeys, which is a small group travel company. Um, and we actually create small group custom and self-guided trips. Uh, and we're, the, we're hosting your event this evening along with uh, Jennifer, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Jennifer. Most people call me Jen, but I really don't have a preference. So whatever you'd like is great. I'll be guiding the yoga on this trip. I'm originally from Austin, um, but I've been in Colorado for the last four or five months. Um, and let's see, I'm a 500 hour certified teacher. I teach mostly vinyasa, um, but I also love teaching yin um, and also power. Um, I'm a certified health coach and also teach some fitness classes as well. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm super excited about this trip and excited <laughs> to hopefully get to meet some of you all. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. Really excited to have you on board. And, uh, Nancy, would you like to introduce yourself coming at you straight from Dominica? <laughs> yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Nancy. Nobody, including myself, can pronounce my last name. <laughs> I'm originally from Switzerland, but I've been in Dominica for 13 years now. So I'm actually Dominican as well as Swiss. And uh, I will definitely meet you if you're coming on this trip. <laughs> I'm right here at Jungle Bay. <laughs> Amen. We're happy to have your, your face there to welcome everybody in. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I forgot to, I guess, mention a little bit more about myself. So I grew up in the States. I, I've lived in Austin for quite a few years, and now I'm coming at you from Ireland, where I've been living for the last year. So it's, uh, yeah, those people on the, on the other side of the Atlantic are uh, <laughs> similar time zone as, as me. Um, so a little bit about Traverse Journeys, just to give you some background information on um, your hosts. We're, like I said, a travel company that specializes in small group, self-guided and custom tours to over 25 countries around the world. Um, we focus a lot on sustainability and impact driven travel experiences. Um, so what that means is that we really try to infuse our trips with um, transformative values and we center everything on our motto, which is people, planet and purpose. So our motto, um, those three tiers, we kind of break it into people by offering culturally immersive experiences, um, focus on people to people contact in different destinations that we travel to. So it could be staying overnight at a marae in, in New Zealand or um, interacting with indigenous communities in Brazil, learning about traditional foods and cooking techniques in Ecuador, Italy, or Dominica. Um, we use local guides throughout the trips so that you can really learn about and understand destinations like through the eyes of a local. 
Um, and we seek destinations where travel is beneficial to the community as well. Um, so with our planet uh, pillar, we obviously visit some of the most beautiful destinations on earth. Um, and when we do that, we uphold responsible practices to leave no trace and seek ways to really regenerate and improve the destinations that we go to. So we often, you know, work with hotels and activity operators that prioritize eco-friendly practices, solar energy, water conservation, um, and, you know, restaurants and food experiences that, that prioritize local, organic, seasonal. Um, and we, a lot of our partners also have their own, um, you know, contributions that they make to, to conservation or other uh, community, you know, supports. So, um, and the purpose aspect of our trips is obviously infused into everything, but uh, one of the other big aspects is that we partner with a local NGO in every destination that we go to, and we contribute a, a portion of the sales for that trip to that NGO and meet with them or like a community um, project or fund and, and we learn about what they do, the work, and, you know, really kind of gain some insight into the destination through, through that engagement. Um, so that's a little background on Traverse Journeys. We'll dive into Dominica now. So Dominica, just to give you a little snapshot of where it is, it's in the Caribbean. Hopefully you knew that much already. <laughs> Um, it's just uh, right there in between Guadeloupe and St. Lucia and uh, oh, people are filing in still. Um, so in the Caribbean, we see Dominica just there. And in case some of you are confused, um, you might notice me saying Dominica, where in your mind, you've always been thinking Dominica, 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 like most people. Certainly it took me a couple days in Dominica before I realized that I was pronouncing it wrong. So everyone say it with me now, Dominica, Dominica. And just for some added pronunciation practice, we're gonna watch this quick little video that'll really hammer it in for you. <laughs> Okay, boom, we call it Dominica. Yes, the nature isle of the Caribbean. It's rum punch time. Oh, we call it Dominica. It is spelled D O M I N I C A. It is not Dominican Republic, it is pronounced Dominica and is situated between Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean. When I think of Dominica, I, it's all natural and you can get any, you could just go to the tree right now and pick a pawpaw and you just eat. You just go to the garden, get a cane and you make a juice. So it's just lovely, it's just nature. You know, you could get everything from Dominica. We are Dominica. <laughs> we call it Dominica, the nature act. Deep life. Yeah, we love Dominica. And I hope you love it too as well. You know that. <laughs> we call it Dominica. We call it Dominica. It's called Dominica. Call it Dominica. We call it Dominica. We call it Dominica. We call it Dominica. We call Dominica the nature island. Did everyone, I, I got a message from someone that they were not able to see the um, video. Is that, is anybody else having issues? Hello, no? Okay, I'll move along then. <laughs> 
All right, so hopefully that hammers it in and everybody's got it in their head now. Dominica, Dominica. And of course that gives you just a really nice, incredible like overview of the, of the island. Um, obviously videos and images can do so much more sometimes than descriptions. So um, that is uh, Dominica in a nutshell. Now we'll go through a little bit more. Here we go. So uh, the capital of Dominica is Rosso. The population is around 72,000. Um, it's actually English speaking, first language. Uh, there is some French or Creole and, and uh, Calinago as well, but the primary language is English. Um, the Eastern Caribbean dollar is the currency. The airport, if you're looking at flights, you want to enter Douglas Charles Airport, although sometimes on maps or even in flight searching engines, it might show up as Melville Hall because that was the previous name for the airport. So just keep that in mind. Um, the geography is about 290 square miles in which there are 365 rivers, <laughs> waterfalls galore. Nine of the Caribbean's 15 volcanoes are on Dominica. So it's a very mountainous kind of topography and it's super, you know, differentiated from, from other islands because of that. Um, the highest peak is 4,747 feet and it's 60% forest covered, which I think makes it the most forest covered in the Caribbean, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it's definitely a unique island amongst, uh, amongst its neighbors. And another part of the interesting kind of unique aspects to, to Dominica is the uh, history. So originally um, the, it was settled uh, from South America and then the indigenous Caribbeans called Calinago took over in the 1400s. Um, the French, kind of came in and took over dominance um, and brought enslaved people from West Africa for a while. And then Great Britain took control. So that's where you kind of get some of that French and English um, influence. And then it gained independence in 1978. So that just gives you kind of the different melting pot cultures and mixes that, that come into play in, in Dominica. Um, yes, that's True in the chat, I've heard that, that it's the only island Christopher Columbus would recognize if you were to sail the Caribbean seas because it's still so untouched. So leading to what is Dominica known for? First and foremost, the nature. Um, it's called the nature island, in fact, just in case uh, you ever forget. <laughs> um, so it is an incredibly lush, like I remember flying into Dominica and I just felt like I was, like, you know, Jurassic Park or something, just this, you know, gorgeous, lush, jungly kind of, um, yeah, really wild island that, that had just rugged kind of untouched beauty. Um, and it's also known for some really amazing uh, adventure activities and ecotourism is like really at the forefront in Dominica. Uh, they really prioritize sustainable values and organic culture or agriculture, sorry. Um, and locally owned and operated tourism businesses are very prevalent. There's a lot less tourism leakage in Dominica, which if you know anything about responsible travel, uh, tourism leakage is when a lot of the tourism dollars don't stay within the communities. Um, and lots of conservation efforts as well are infused into the eco tourism. And of course, lots of fresh tropical foods and friendly or welcoming culture. Um, so speaking about the nature in Dominica, there are quite a lot of different aspects to that. We've got rainforests, volcanoes, obviously, which come with hot springs. Um, waterfalls galore, like I said, tropical plants and flowers, and um, there's beaches, although the beaches tend to be a little more like rugged and dramatic coastlines rather than those, you know, sort of flat white sand beaches that some of the other islands in the Caribbean are known for, and lots of underwater wonders as well. So when we talk about nature, there's so much there. Um, Nancy, having lived in Dominica for a long time, can tell us more about what kind of sets Dominica's nature apart from other places that are beautiful and 
have lots of natural beauty. So I think <laughs> it is because to me, okay, this is my impression. Um, and I told you I'm coming from Switzerland where of course we have a lot of, you know, mountain trails and a lot of nature too. Um, but Dominica is just pure nature. Like nothing has been set up uh, in a way for tourists. And this is what I really like. It's just really, really natural and pure. And sometimes, you know, when we go and explore a hike we haven't been to for a long time, we all have to bring our machetes to actually cut our way through to get uh, through uh, the bush. So this is what I think makes the difference really. Yeah, absolutely. And that speaks to like, you know, the fact that it doesn't see like, you know, thousands and thousands of high volume, you know, tourists means that nature really has this chance to constantly, you know, <laughs> regenerate. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, and you, as you can see the photos here, these are just a few examples of, you know, beautiful nature throughout the island and a few more to kind of take in lots of incredible waterfalls, like I mentioned. Do you have like a favorite activity or day or destination to go in nature, Nancy? Hmm, that's a difficult question. <laughs> but honestly, everything is so different and everything is a different experience. To me, as long as I'm in nature, I always find something I can just not get my eyes off or not being astonished. Um, to me, it's just being out in nature. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of all the, I'm, I'm like a water person. So definitely like the ocean and the coast and the waterfalls is really just, yeah, special. But I think it's a lot of that too, just, just having it all to yourself, you know, that feeling definitely. Jennifer, like hearing about Dominique, is there anything that, that you're like most looking forward to? Um, well, I love nature. In fact, that was one of the main reasons why I left Austin <laughs> <laughs> um, was to live closer to nature. And so I live in a tiny town in the mountains now. Um, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, nature is definitely one of my primary just ways to connect back to myself and to heal and to clear my mind. And so yeah, just getting to see something so pristine and untouched by um, the destruction of humanity is, <laughs> is pretty exciting for me. Yeah, yeah. And it's great that it's such a, you know, priority to keep it that way on the island, which is nice, yeah. yeah. Um, and so another thing, of course, along with the nature is the incredible adventure activities that you can experience. Uh, within and amongst that nature. Um, lots of hiking, of course, obviously, and then uh, snorkeling and diving, kayaking and canyoning, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. Um, Nancy, is there certain activities that you feel like people are just always raving about as like, you know, their favorites? They rave about everything. <laughs> no, it is really true. You know, if somebody goes on a bird uh, excursion, they're like, oh my God, this was so interesting. If somebody goes canyoning, oh my God, this was the best thing. So honestly, um, and if we would have something on our program, which wouldn't be liked by our guests, we would take it away right away, but this has never happened. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. Um, in the chat there, someone asked if the volcanoes are active. I'm pretty sure, I mean, they're, they're dormant. When was the last time there was any activity? Do you know off the top of your head? I mean, they're all active. And you well, active, yeah, in the sense that there's geothermal activity, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. so you see that in- There's the no active lava flow, though, at the moment. Hopefully not, no. <laughs> <laughs> not like Iceland at the moment. <laughs> uh, when you go snorkeling at Champagne Beach, uh, you see that through the bubbles coming up. That's why it's called Champagne Beach. Um, Soufriere, um, the village, the neighboring village we located in, uh, that actually means sulfur. And in the back of Soufriere, we have hot springs and we do have an area which almost like um, being on the moon. So this is really where you see the activity still active. Yeah. 
And sometimes yeah, in the hot springs as well. I mean, that, yeah, it's, <laughs> there's activity going on underneath. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The black sand beach is beautiful. There are native birds. There's definitely a lot of people that go to Dominica for bird watching. Um, and um, I see someone wrote this, the Cicero parrot is a native bird. Yeah. Um, so adventure activities are, yeah, plenty, plenty to choose from. <laughs> In, in Dominica. And uh, in addition to getting out in nature, you're also going to be welcomed by, of course, the incredible Dominican people um, who I find just to have a really, you know, bubbly or, you know, vivacious kind of spirit that, that's infectious and lots of big smiles wherever you go. Um, have you experienced the, the you know, that welcoming spirit in Dominica in any particular way or any any specific stories that <laughs> highlight that? It's just like you say. <laughs> 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 Wherever you go, uh, it's really true. And what amazes me is like, I go running every morning or jogging. Um, I'm not really that fast. And what really caught my attention comparing it to Europe is like, Everybody is loud, everybody is shouting, everybody <laughs> is listening to music, everybody is waving at you. So um, yeah, well, definitely um, a joy, really. Yeah, it's like a festive spirit kind of <laughs> throughout the year. <laughs> yeah, and the, the, oh, sorry, were you saying something? Yeah, just the, the welcoming spirit, you know, the guides I found just across the board, you know, every activity that you do, um, they're just, you know, full of, of, you know, knowledge that they want to share and, you know, really friendly um, and very curious to hear about you as well. Um, so, yeah, there's just a lot of, and I think because tourism is really driven by the locals, um, that, that, you know, welcoming spirit is kind of interwoven into into tourism and, um, you know, approach, you know, so visitors are, are very much welcomed. Um, <clears throat> and the, the cultural influences in Dominica, like we touched on a little bit, are, are quite vast. Um, so one of the things that they're known for, actually, is that they have the largest indigenous population in the Caribbean. Um, and there's a, a reserve, the Kalinago Reserve, on the northeast of the island. Yeah. Um, which is a place that people can go and visit, although at the moment probably not so much maybe with COVID <laughs> or maybe, it's, okay. Um, but yeah, their, their um, influence is sort of infused into different parts of the, the culture in Dominica. And because, you know, they're still around, whereas in other Caribbean islands, they might no longer be there or, you know, haven't been for a while. Um, there's also, of course, like I said, the French and the English influences. So, you know, lots of Creole culture and, um, but the, you know, English language and English other, you know, influences. And then the Afro-Caribbean kind of influences from the, the, the slaves that were brought there. And of course, they're still, you know, stayed in the, the culture that they brought with them and infused. And, and Dominique actually housed or housed, um, was home to a lot of maroons, a lot of escaped slaves, because the topography made it easier for them to kind of um, hide away and, and not be, you know, discovered or conquered or whatever by the, the colonizers. So there was a lot of maroon culture that, that thrived in the interior of the island. Um, yeah, anything to add to that, Nancy? Did I get all that? <laughs> Um, and today, like the cultural values are still, you know, there's still a lot of traditional customs and things like I notice, especially, you know, the plant medicines and other herbal remedies. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about like those things that have still been passed down, Nancy? Yeah. So this is what fascinated me most. Um, because I still grew up in Switzerland uh, with uh you know, medicine from the garden, especially from my grandparents. And this is exactly what I met here um, in Dominica. So most people here still know, well, guava you can eat as a fruit. I'm looking to the side because Delvin is next to me, our new assistant general manager, so he can help me if I say anything wrong. Um, but guava leaves. Sorry. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was just me. Can you speak a little louder or maybe turn up your mic a little bit or closer to the mic? That, that 
That'll do it. I have yeah. to get closer to the computer then. So there we go. Better? Yeah. Okay. So for example, guava uh, can be a fruit, of course, but here it's also used uh, as a tea if you have an upset stomach or soursop, which is another fruit. Uh, the leaves are being used uh, when you cannot sleep at night. Um, so things like that really fascinated me and I'm learning and learning uh, every day <laughs> new things. So, yeah. yeah. And I think especially through this COVID time, it really showed us that we here on the nature on the nature island have, you know, everything it takes to boost our immune system. And all we have to do is going outside and pick our leaves and pick our mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Diet is such a big part of, you know, natural immunity and, and being healthy. So definitely, yeah, I imagine you eat well and feel good. <laughs> um, and, and there's lots of, you know, colorful festivals and celebrations in Dominica as well. There's actually a World Creole Music Festival there in uh, which month? October and October. October, that's right. Um, and uh, lots of different musical influences, calypso and reggae and, uh, you know, anything, anything for, for a good time, a little bit of dancing, right? <laughs> so then to add that we also make our own rum. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And infuse it with lots of different flavors yes, too. Yes, we want to name it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a couple more notes to speak louder. So I guess we should either, yeah speak louder, lean into our mics, maybe if other people are having issues, let me know in case it's more than just that one person. Um, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about probably something that some of you are curious about if you're thinking of traveling soon or this year. So a little bit in regards to the COVID management um, in Dominica, which has been you know, unique, especially as an island nation and you know, quite cut off. They've had to kind of manage things you know, very carefully. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about like how that's you know, played out over the last year and, and what kind of cases you've seen in Dominica or restrictions and how you've adapted to not having any tourism for a while. Um, well, the advantage is that we are an island and we only have 72,000 people living on the island, as you mentioned. So the island has closed the borders in March and officially on the reopened again on the 1st of September. Um, the thing is, it didn't really impact the island that much because Dominica is not so much depending on tourism. And actually what we did, because we still, um, we, we actually relocated uh, Jungle Bay in 2015 to this side and we just opened here on the West Coast in 2019. And so we still had a lot of things we needed to complete. And so actually when we closed, um, a lot of our staff switched over to other jobs like landscaping, for example. I know our spa team was working on the landscaping and it really looks good. Um, so honestly, it hasn't really touched us that much, but we were extremely happy when we were able to open again um, end of October when the so-called managed experience safe in nature plan was worked out together with the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Tourism. So the Ministry of Health was making sure that everything is 200% safe and <laughs> The Ministry of Tourism and us as hoteliers, of course, we were making sure that it's going to be an enjoyable experience um, for our visitors. Because the first thought was, of course, to lock everybody up for a week <laughs> in quarantine, not being able to leave the hotel room. And that wouldn't have made much sense to us, as you can understand. So what the managed experience does is actually you can do almost everything. Um, I think it's also because our activities and our concept has always been in a way 
today I would call it COVID friendly, right? Because you're out in nature, you are keeping social distancing. Uh, you're not mingling in bars or restaurants or crowded places. People come here to have space um, and be out in, in nature. And so everything we do on our activity schedule, our uh, spa treatments, except for, um, there's only one thing, for example, for the spa we had to amend, which are facial treatments, but everything else can be done in a way that it's safe uh, for the visitors as well as the staff. So in Dominique, and you can look this up, we have had zero deaths um, due to COVID. We currently, I just looked it up this morning because usually we don't really talk about it, uh, but we have nine active cases and they probably uh, right now um, under control because we have so much testing in place. Um, when you come to Dominica, you have to have a negative PCR test, which must be valid within 72 hours. And you also get tested through a rapid blood test at the airport when you come in. And once you're negative, you're released to a COVID certified um, accommodation and transportation. <laughs> we don't let you walk from the airport to juggle. Me. Um, and then basically you're going to be under that managed experience which means there's always a guide with you once you're going out in nature once you do the kayaking or the diving or the canyoning this is all part of the managed experience what the guide basically does is making sure that you're not mingling with um, any locals around uh, on the beach or you know, just wandering off to a restaurant or something like that. Yeah. Um, but the guide is honestly, for me, uh, when I first came to Dominica, and even now, I would never go on a hike, you know, by myself or with uh, somebody visiting me who doesn't know the area because it is really nature. And if you don't know where you're going, this can be really dangerous. So. Uh, to me, this guide uh, is not so much about the COVID, but really here, here to uh, show me the plants, explain to me the flora and fauna, and, you know, uh, provide a good experience for me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as we talked about, the guides are excellent there. And it's really fantastic how, you know, well Dominica has managed it, and it just shows, you know, that it can be done, you know, in a really safe way, but also really enjoyable way. And it, of course, doesn't hurt that, you know, Dominica is so focused on nature that it just lends itself perfectly to, to having a, you know, safe getaway. <clears throat> so from all the visitors we have hosted so far since um, October last year under this program, they have been really thrilled and they were all positively surprised actually how much they are able to do. Um, of course, on the property, you have to wear your mask uh, until you're seated in the restaurant um, or until you're seated on your yoga mat. I think that has become uh, a habit anywhere in the world uh, yeah. nowadays. But yeah. um, Jungle Bay <laughs> is a huge botanical garden by itself. So <laughs> yeah. You're just walking around and picking your Yeah, mask. we're going to take a little like virtual trip now so we can see some of the different elements of... of the, the grounds and everything else that we have to experience on the island. Um, so we're gonna start our, our virtual travel experience with another short video, just, uh, just under two minutes here, just to give you kind of that visual background as we talk about these different elements. Um, so here you go. Jungle Bay, Dominica is the perfect setting for your next wellness retreat. Relax and rejuvenate your mind, body, and soul in this tropical paradise where an amazing array of tropical fruits will take you back to the way it used to be in the Garden of Eden. Tastefully appointed rustic stone villas surround hardwood yoga studios and a health spa with 14 treatment rooms. Restaurants offer an array of organic, vegetarian, and local Caribbean cuisine.
The hiking trails of this lush rainforest island will take you to hidden waterfalls, hot mineral springs in between sleepy little villages where visitors are welcome to share in the simple traditional way of life. Hike to a mountain settlement where you can experience traditional chocolate making, processing coconut oil the traditional way, or cooking root vegetables on three stones. The six hour boiling lake hike is a must for the bravest of hearts. Dominica's rugged coastline is home to many hidden coves and secret beaches that offer some of the best diving, snorkeling, and ocean kayaking in the world. Contact us today to begin your wellness escape to Jungle Bay, Dominica. Okay, so yeah, there you can kind of get the, the grand picture of the location and some of the different activities. Um, and now we'll talk a little bit more about every aspect of that. Oh, sorry. Gentle I keep doing that. <laughs> uh, so a little background with all of our itineraries. These are, you know, kind of the core elements that we infuse. Uh, so you can always expect this from, from any of our, our trips that we plan. Um, and then the Dominica retreat itself, um, which is this June 28th through July 3rd. These are the main inclusions. Um, so obviously five nights at the beautiful lodge, airport transfers, daily yoga classes with Jen, um, botanical gardens, waterfalls, champagne pool. We'll talk a little bit more about each of these, um, but those are the inclusions that we have in this, in this itinerary. Um, and we also have a self-guided holiday. So if you do want to pick your own dates or go with just a couple of your friends and you know do something more independent, um, we have a package for a self-guided trip um, that we offer year round. And these are the, the kind of ways that that uh, holiday works and the inclusions that you have uh, for that one. So there's a couple options that you can, that you can do. Um, so your accommodations are these beautiful villas that you can see. And this picture is actually old. It's from before the grounds had really grown and, you know, produced all the lush vegetation. So it's even more kind of lush at the moment than what you see here. Um, and the villas are absolutely gorgeous, um, just beautifully designed and really thoughtfully uh, built. In fact, there were a lot of like sustainable and sort of community driven values that were went into the building of Jungle Bay, right Nancy? Like with using local materials and eco-friendly aspects to the architecture. So you actually may see them here in the back. I don't see um, my own screen, <laughs> so I don't see what you see, but you should see a stone wall cool. in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and actually each and every of this stone, and you have the same on the villas, has been hand cut. Mm -hmm. And the stone is all from this property right here. Um, and you will also see some very interesting feature with stones, the different um, walls which have been uh, built. Uh, there's different techniques about that. So that by itself is a very interesting story um, yeah. to tell, yeah. And um, around the lodge, you know, the nature is right at your fingertips. There's that beautiful uh, massage room, the restaurant, which you're kind of, do you want to show us the view out your, your window there, Nancy? You're sort of looking out. The restaurant now, but there was too much glare in the background. Okay. I don't really see what you see. <laughs> <laughs> but you should see uh maybe part i can see the ocean <laughs> ah yeah scott's head oh. actually and there's the uh there's the pool yeah that's that's the pool live uh currently at the moment yes and, uh, <laughs> honestly one of the most incredible infinity pools that i think i've ever seen it's just it's hard to like tear yourself away from it sometimes to go and do other things on the island. <laughs> it's a good problem to have though. <clears throat> um, so that's a little bit about the place. The yoga classes are in these beautiful uh, yoga shalas or sometimes you could even have a yoga class outside as well as you can see 
there. Uh, Jen, I'm going to turn it over to you for a little while to talk about, um, you know, the kind of yoga classes that you offer and your teaching style and yoga philosophy. Cool. Um, well, I have been teaching full time now for about seven years. Um, it is my love language. I've tried to do other things and it just keeps pulling me back. <laughs> I can't get away. Um, so it's just my joy to share it, um, with other people and I'm, travel is my second joy. So combining yoga and travel just like lights me up and I'm just so honored and excited to be coming on this trip. Um, my yoga lineage, I guess you could call it in the yoga world, um, you know, stems from, from Ashtanga, but, um, in recent years, I've kind of toned down my, my practice um, to incorporate a little bit more um, Hatha and Yin practices. I, my favorite class to teach right now is a combination of Vinyasa and Yin. So you get a little bit of both. You get that warming kind of heated practice, and then we, you know, tone it down and ground and stretch and um, really utilize that healing powers of yin to um, access the fascia and, you know, deeper layers of the body. Um, so I believe that, you know, yoga is a lifestyle. It's a healing modality. It is um, a spiritual practice for some people, but, um, you know, that's never enforced upon anyone. Um, so yeah, I don't know what else. Um, I kind of base all my classes, um, I'm pretty intuitive. So I kind of just read the room and see like where people are at um, based yeah. on your skill level. I'm able to, I've been teaching so long that it, I can adapt to pretty much any scenario. Um, yeah. So from beginners to advanced to a combination of both. Um, the primary studio that I taught at the longest when I lived in Austin, um, is really a mix of all levels. So you got everyone from somebody who walked in off the street, their first yoga class ever to, you know, somebody who'd been practicing daily for several years. So we really had to, that was kind of my training ground to learn how to just accommodate yeah. and blend. Yeah. With these kinds of trips, you know, we tend to get a mix of, you know, ages, like someone just asked right. there in the and you know skill levels and some people you know yeah some people are like really like diehard yogis and you know signed up for the trip you know especially because they wanted to do yoga every day and some people are like I've never done yoga maybe I'll try it maybe I'll yeah. sleep in the mornings you know there's no obligation to do every yoga class of course you can <laughs> enjoy oh, it like it's your vacation <laughs> exactly exactly so um yeah thank you Kayla Kayla lives here um in town with me and has been taking my classes um Madeline Austin uh, I taught at Black Swan Yoga um it's a great place to get started um it's a great place to really find a couple teachers that you want to kind of specifically follow because it's the studio that gives teachers complete freedom to teach however they want. Yeah. So you're not going to get a consistent experience from one teacher to the next. So I would recommend um, finding a teacher or two that you really like and kind of sticking with them um, if you can. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you lived in Austin for a while and now you're in Colorado. So you're probably teaching classes in Colorado currently. Yeah. I still teach online, um, oh. several times a week, um, yeah. for Black Swan. <laughs> online classes. I'll be sending out links for everyone to kind of follow up and I'll be sure to include Jen's, uh, online classes. So you guys can get a little taste or flavor if you like. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we can keep going. Uh, so the, other aspect of our trip that I mentioned before, the community partner, um, for this trip, we actually are lucky to be able to sort of infuse that into uh, our accommodation as well, because Jungle Bay has this incredible community fund that they've had going for years, and they've supported all kinds of different uh, projects, like, you know, improving literacy and school scholarships, um, promoting conservation and supporting health clinics. Um, Nancy, can you describe a little bit more about the community fund and some of the projects that you've supported? I know the entrepreneurship program was a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And uh, by the way, 10% from all the tips collected uh, are going to the community fund. So also the staff is contributing to it. And it's actually all of us, the entire staff together who makes decision on where the fund um, or where the funds are going to. And it's mainly used for um, emergencies oftentimes, uh, medical emergencies that can be a staff of us or a former staff of us or family members. Um, I remember at one point we had one of our um, employees' house being burned down, Diana, mm -hmm. and we were able to help her right away. Um, and it's school events like graduations where the kids get a little present. This also brings awareness to uh, tourism and to Jungle Bay and how Jungle Bay can be integrated in the communities and the communities start to understand that it's also part of their community and um, that tourism can help them uh, in different ways. So it's quite interesting. Yeah. To learn see, and feel about that as well, yeah. <laughs> It's such a great like way that you align and it's just exactly how we try to, you know, promote and create tourism opportunities as well. It's just, you know, connecting, uh, you know, travel and tourism to the local communities and natural environments in ways that they both can benefit. Um, so, yeah, it's great. It's great that you have that fun and we're happy to support it. Um, so our itinerary when we arrive to Dominica um, might look a little something like this uh, as you're flying in the mountainous landscape there. Um, this is the little village of uh, Sufier that's close to Jungle Bay. So the resort is kind of up on that, that hillside or cliff top up there. Um, and this is the, the villas. So these are this kinds of images that you can expect on your on your first day as you as you arrive um, and then on that first day if depending on what time of day you arrive you might be able to join uh, like an herbal and uh, herb and herbal tea demonstration or experience where you learn about those you know medicinal plants and things herbal remedies that that are um, you know commonly found on, on Dominica and you can settle into your gorgeous uh, villa and then, you know, we'll have a welcome dinner that evening with everyone in the group and an evening yoga class as well with Jen. Um, so that's kind of how the first day when you arrive to paradise would look. Um, and then the next day we head out into some of the nearby areas. So we're going to go to Scott's Head, which is kind of this little, you know, outlet like little peninsula I guess <laughs> type thing connected uh, to the mainland there you can see kind of by that little inlet there that little small bit of land yeah there you can see it in the background <laughs> it's that little bump out in the ocean <laughs> that Scott said uh, it's a little hike along there you get these gorgeous views of the surrounding area and you visit the village um, and special little secret hot springs um, what are some of the things that they guess would you know, the highlights of these places in your mind, Nancy? So to me, it's really um, seeing the, the village life and the fishermen um, in the villages, um, how life is really still very, very simple. And it's not just a special village. This is how it is on the entire island. And then what uh, is, of course, also a highlight is actually what you see on that uh, little picture is, is a hot spring. And uh, there was a man, uh, man built hot springs before, which got uh, destroyed in one of the past storms. And now it's left as a natural stream coming down. And the water is sometimes almost too hot to get into. Um, and there's actually almost ever anybody there because um yeah people kind of forgot about this so that's our secret spot where we can also take you under the managed experience <laughs> yeah it's uh definitely 
a good way to kind of introduce yourself to the lay of the land and understand these different elements of you know village life and the nature of course um, in the afternoon then we're going to go to right outside of uh, the village where is the well-known champagne beach or champagne reef champagne pool all these words are used sometimes to describe um, but it's an incredible place if you're, you know, avid snorkeler, just like to get in the water. Um, this is such a unique experience because as you're, you know, snorkeling through the water, there's all of these like thousands of bubbles coming up from the floor of the ocean because of the geothermal vents that are located there. So you're really like just swimming through, like the name suggests, like a champagne glass. <laughs> Um, and of course there's coral and tropical fish and you know that beautiful blue waters lots of um visibility and it's just a yeah kind of magical unique snorkeling experience um so that's day two of course and then the evenings you know dinner yoga and we can have yoga in the mornings as well some days so daily yoga mornings or evenings always breakfast always you know dinner in the evenings um, but these are daytime excursions. So then we go to the botanical gardens, um, which is there anything unique um, in particular June and July, Nancy, or just what are some of the kind of special things in the botanical gardens? There's always something special. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I always uh, think it's, it's quite funny when people speak about the botanical garden in Roseau in the city, while here at Jungle Bay, I would describe it as a <laughs> garden. But what I remember from that botanical garden was the sausage tree. Sounds interesting. <laughs> another interesting thing because here in Dominica, even at that, and people can go and figure out for themselves what it is. <laughs> <laughs> very simple um in dominique we like to call the things how they are so mm -hmm. that tree has like sausages on the tree right <laughs> I, I wouldn't even know the real name i think <laughs> Dominicans, like, <laughs> knows the tree, forever sausages. <laughs> a lot of uh, very interesting um you know features so that's just yeah. one of the <laughs> At the botanical gardens, things are labeled. Maybe that's the difference between the Jungle Bay grounds. And right. The... <laughs> and actually, this is this is really true. I'm I'm not kidding mm -hmm. about that. We call things how they are. I remember the story where a guest was asking mm -hmm. several times, "How is the snake called?" And I asked several people, and the only answer I got black snake with yellow <laughs> dots by the way uh there is no poisonous animal in dominica so you don't have to be afraid even if you do see uh, a snake uh so it's it's very safe black snake with yellow dots i like it <laughs> um day three continues with our visit to trafalgar falls which are these incredible twin falls actually that you can see there um, and they're just a short little hike to to get to that viewpoint um, but then from there if you're if you're adventurous you can clamber up the um the boulders and kind of get up to the to right where the waterfall is is you know kind of meeting the rocks and there's actually like hot springs in there as well you can kind of find the the warm waters that are tumbling down and get a nice shoulder massage <laughs> Um, and then the gorge there as well, where you can jump in and swim through uh, this beautiful gorge. And um, that's all part of day three. Um, and then we move along into another day where we hike to a different waterfall, Middleham Falls. Um, and this is a couple hours hike, but it's gorgeous. Nancy, I know you really enjoy the hike. Do you want to talk a little bit about what it's like <laughs> well the, the only word i can find is really magical and i only realized this now that's what you uh put on the slide uh magic but this is really the impression i had it's like this huge waterfall um and it's just i don't know i i don't know how to describe it it's just magical that's that's what i felt and i felt really um, a special energy there. By the way, energies, if you're somebody who works with energy or sensitive to energies, um, you're going to feel a lot here in Dominica. Mm. Very cool. Yeah. 
that's a, um, that's it. I mean, especially if you're, you know, starting your day with yoga classes and really kind of tapping into that, you know, mindful, conscious awareness, um, anything can happen. Definitely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to, to all the days. Definitely. Um, and then, then last or not the last day. Well, one of the last days we have sort of a choose your own adventure day. Um, so whale watching is an incredible activity to do on Dominica and it's unique because they have a year round sperm whale population. So no matter what time of year or month, you're, you know, very high likelihood of being able to spot, uh, the sperm whales there. And when I went, we were able to see, you know, the, the breaching and the fluking and get really close, you know, they're, it was just, incredible it's the, one of the most amazing experiences I thought I was just like totally in love with it <laughs> um but then there's also going underwater with scuba diving um which I didn't get a chance to do have you just scuba dove in, in Dominica Nancy um I'm not a diver but okay. we get a lot of divers right now um again we relocated from the east to the west and so the west is really actually that uh point which we saw that little uh, mountain that's scott's head and in this area in the scott's head sophia marine reserve are 20 of the best dive sites and this is really what world-class diver and especially people who dole everywhere in the world have been telling me reconfirming what our local dive shop um, has been telling me <laughs> um, what is unique here in dominica is that um, you have a 500 meter wall going right down so we also a capital for uh, free divers um, you see a lot of school of fish not so much uh, big fish uh, but definitely schools of fish, which makes it really interesting. The reefs are extremely healthy, um, a lot of colors, sponges. Um, so for divers, it's always a very, very unique experience. And one of the advantages I hear as well is, is that we are so close to the dive uh, shop. It's less than five minutes to go down to Soufriere and you take a boat ride of maximum of 15 minutes. Most of the sites are reachable within five to 10 minutes by boat. So you do a one tank dive and you can actually come back to shore um, to get water, eat a snack, and then go out again on the boat. So this is really what um, sticks out in terms of diving. Yeah, that's true. There's not a long, you know, route to access the, all the dive spots. They're just right there. <clears throat> Um, another experience that you could do, which was one of my actual favorite experiences in Dominica and just honestly like of the year, or, you know, last couple of years was the canyoning um, adventure, which I just, I, I had no idea what I was signing up for really. Um, <laughs> and between, you know, the activity of like rappelling down waterfalls and jumping off into waterfall pools and zip lining and kind of clambering around and swimming through these narrow little uh, ravines and just the, again, like that untouched, you know, magical nature with like the rays of light kind of coming through the, the canyons. Um, and then on top of that, the guides, you know, were just so fun and so skillful and really good at like making sure everybody was safe and come, you know, people, some people were really go-getter adventures and some people are a little more like timid or scared to, you know, do some of the jumps or whatever. And they were just really great, like making sure everybody was comfortable and safe. Um, so that's another top experience for sure. Um, and then when we all come back after our day of choosing our own adventure, we have an awesome Caribbean cooking class. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the cuisine in just a minute here, but um, yeah, you'll learn a little bit about some of the traditional dishes and of course get a chance to make them as well. Um, and we'll have our last evening dinner and yoga class together before there is the sad departure the next day. Um, but, really, really unique and special at the moment is that we have a really cool offer where you can actually add on two nights to our trip. And they're the two nights prior to our trip dates. So um, instead of arriving on June 28th, you could arrive June 26th. 
and stay uh, for two extra nights for only $250, which is an awesome, really cool limited deal available. So if you wanted to kind of elongate your trip and give yourself more time to explore the incredible parts of Dominica, then, then that's available to, to everyone. Um, so we're kind of coming close to, well, just over an hour. Um, and I'm still so trying to flick through some of these next parts a little quicker. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about the cuisine just because of course, you know, that's half the reason we travel sometimes, right? It's to, to eat all the deliciousness and Dominique is full of, you know, lots of fresh flavors and Creole kind of techniques and spices, uh, lots of, uh, seafood and different plants and herbs that are used. Um, lots of, as we of course know, tropical flavors and produce. Um, is there anything particular that'll be available in that time of year, June, July, Nancy? I know some things like vary throughout the year. <laughs> Delvin is shouting mangoes, mangoes, mangoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, some of the fruits uh, you will see is papaya. They actually are uh, available year round and here in Dominica, uh, this is how they look like. <laughs> They're really huge. They're from one of our trees. Um, and then some of the amazing, this is how our tea looks like. They don't come in a tea bag. We actually have to make our own tea. So uh, <laughs> you would grate your own ginger and cinnamon. And we have cinnamon trees right here on the property as well. Oh, I love it. Yes, definitely lots of good things to put in your belly, fresh seafood. Um, and then, you know, there's also like infused like gourmet and, you know, different kinds of cuisine at the, at the restaurants as well. And yes, it's a great place for vegans, I think, from that question there, because so much is focused on, you know, fruit and vegetable. <laughs> so you're definitely in the right spot if you're vegan or vegetarian. Um, and, you know, we cater to, to any kind of... Um, dietary restrictions typically within reason. Um, so some travel tips, uh, I know some people are asking in the chat there, so when to go. Um, obviously June and July are great months and we definitely think that, you know, they're, it's a good combination of, um, you know, just the weather and, and things like that, but it's not necessarily like the high season or busiest times that, um, you know, where things might be a bit more crowded. And then September, October are like the, the rainiest months. Um, so, you know, hurricane season or whatever possibility, but mostly just uh, rain. Uh, any other months that you want to comment on, Nancy, that are good or, or better or worse? <laughs> I think you said it uh, really well. And Dominique is really a year-round travel destination. Yes, um, yeah. So, yeah. But if you want to be safe, 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 hurricanes do happen or can happen. Um, in the 13 years I've been here, I only experienced it uh, actually once. Uh, the other one was a tropical storm. And from what you see from the tracking, actually, interestingly, it hits more the US than it hits the Caribbean nowadays. So that's kind of interesting as well. Cool. Yeah. The typical temperature outdoors is like, in the what 80s during the day i would say and then maybe 60s at night yeah that's correct and in the yeah. winter time it's a little cooler than in the summertime but yeah actually up here we always get a nice breeze and all the windows have uh louvers which you can open yeah. uh, a lot of fresh air actually at night i often have to really shut the windows because i'm too cold and i'm from switzerland so that means something <laughs> Yeah, the rains are, are, I mean, there's rain throughout the year, um, but the rainiest seasons or months are September and October. And the hottest months you said, I think were August, right? And August, September, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what to pack. So obviously packing for those temperatures um, is a good idea and very casual. There's no, you know, dress code anywhere on Dominica for sure. Um, definitely want to have good hiking shoes and maybe even a couple pairs of good walking shoes in case one of them gets wet or muddy or, you know, who knows. Um, so you're definitely going to be out in nature. So good shoes um, and sunscreen, everything, you know, take a take a page from Dominica and, and try and be as eco-friendly as possible in your packing. So, you know, reef safe sunscreen and, you know, reusable water bottles and all kinds of things, you know, see if you can challenge yourself to minimize your waste and decrease, you know, plastic and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, with money and tipping, be sure when you do, you know, that you have cash on hand, um, especially for, for tipping. Um, but if you want to tip guides and stuff like that, you're going to want cash on hand. Um, what would you say is like typical tipping culture in, in Dominica? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because, uh, we encourage people to actually leave a tip at the end of their stay and it gets shared among all the staff, which uh, has proven to really be a great um, team player. It actually encourages everybody to give their best. And at the end of the day, everybody gets something. Yeah. nobody's expecting anything so and as you know 10 percent goes to the community fund so you're also contributing to the community itself yeah um and safety like you touched on that a little bit earlier just in terms of like being out in nature and making sure like you know when you're hiking anywhere you want to have you know have a headlamp with you in case you know things get dark before you get back and make sure your phone is charged and we also, you know, require that everyone has travel insurance when they travel just for a variety of reasons. Um, is there anything else you want to add about safety in Dominica, walking around or? I feel extremely safe. I traveled all around the world and especially throughout the Caribbean. Dominica has always been the island I felt uh, the safest, if not like at home, at home. Uh, but on the hikes, you just have to be really careful because there are some steep uh, edges sometimes. So uh, the shoes you touched on are very important that you have good shoes. Uh, you feel comfortable walking in and I use running shoes everywhere. So for me, it's a little different than uh, usually European with their huge hiking boots. I feel really comfortable with my sneakers. Um, yeah, just be careful when you hike and it's not Disneyland here. It's really adventure. It's really nature. So you have to be really careful on the hikes as well. And for yoga, we should say as well, um, like the, the props and everything are all available there. So really <clears throat> good yoga mats. We have bolsters. We have blocks. They wooden blocks. We made them actually here on the property. Uh, very good yoga belts. We have blankets. Um, I couldn't think of anything else. Uh, yeah. me. <laughs> Jen, <laughs> I don't Just know. Yourself. How bring, yourself. bring yourself and get shoes. <laughs> Some of the other Dominica highlights that we didn't get a chance to touch on that I just wanted to give a sort of honorable mention to um, would be in visiting the Kalinaga Reserve um, and the Indian River, which is you can do like you know, canoe trips up that river. Um, there are quite a variety of beaches across the island. And I'll send you actually um, some highlights of different beaches if you're curious about that. Um, the longest hiking trail in the Caribbean is, is on Dominica. It extends the pretty much entire length of the island from north to south. Um, so that's, you know, if someone wants to do like long distance hiking, that's an incredible adventure to do. Although, is it all open at the moment or? Everything is open, but <laughs> uh, there are some challenges on the trail because uh, some of the trails have not been restored. Um, but actually on the program, we do have segment one of the White Tukubli Trail. Um, and it starts right here in the south at Scott's Pass de Clear. Yeah. Um, um, so flights are another thing to mention. Um, it is a bit of a journey to get to Dominica because it's off the beaten path, right? That's by definition means it's a little, it takes a little extra effort to get there, um, but it's well, well worth it. Um, there are typically the, the current best route from the US and North America is to go through San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, so there are non-stops um, to and from San Juan and, you know, quite a few different cities and that might not even be like an exhaustive list there. Um, and then from San Juan to Dominica, there are non-stops on Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays and Saturdays. So our trip starts um, on a Monday, the 28th, but if you add on that two night pre-package, you would arrive on the Saturday. Um, so that's kind of why those dates are chosen. And then back from Dominica, you can uh, do nonstop San Juan on Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, 
Anything about flights from Europe or other parts besides North America that you can add, Nancy? Um, well, it's before COVID and now, so it's a little challenging right now from Europe. Uh, but most flights would right now go through uh, St. Martin or through Barbados and then to Dominica. But from anywhere you want to get to Dominica, you have to land on another island before you get here. Right. There's no to Dominica. As you said, it might be challenging to get here, but this is also the reason why you find Dominica as it is and not another mass tourism destination. So um, yeah. Advantage, disadvantage. In one. <laughs> and once you're there, you're there. You know, there's not a lot of like having to travel all around during the the week or anything. So you know, if you think about it compared to other trips that you might do, where you're you know spending time getting from A to B, um, you know, all that's just done in the the one day that you get there and the one day that you leave. Um, so I know we've answered questions throughout during, uh, during the event in the chat. Is there any other questions that people have or almost done? Um, I know we've gone a little bit longer. So thanks everyone that stuck around. I think everybody almost for the most part did stick around, which is great. <laughs> Hopefully you got a lot of useful information and inspiration to visit probably one of the most, you know, incredible destinations that I've been to. And, I've been a few places. So um, I definitely hope that you're able to, to join, to go to Dominica, whether you join us or, you know, plan your own travels or want us to plan a, a custom or self-guided trip. We do have a really special deal available for limited time for everyone that joined us today. Um, so we have a hundred dollars off our trip um, that expires April 1st. You use code VE100 when you're booking, if you want to take advantage of that. So that would give you the $100 off for the trip um, June 28th to July 3rd. And then you have that extension that you could also add. Um, so it kind of halves the price of the extension too, if that's something <laughs> you wanted to think about it like that. Um, and these are the different ways that you can join our next events. So if you follow us on Eventbrite or Meetup or social media, you'll see we have an event on April 7th and another one coming up soon that I haven't announced yet for April 27th. Um, where there'll be a free yoga session with some Spanish learning, like bilingual yoga, uh, plus some Mexico travel tips. And then the Jordan event, you're actually going to kind of do some hands-on uh, learning how to cook some Jordanian traditional foods. Um, and you can find the events and follow up with us or me um, in, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Meetup, and Eventbrite. My email personally is laura at traversejourneys.com. So if you have any follow-up questions or comments or interests or, you know, anything that you just want to say, go Dominica, um, you can feel free to email me at laura at traversejourneys.com. I'll send an email to everyone that will include the recording for today's event as well as uh, some other blogs that kind of give you some, some helpful information on Dominica and then the links for, for Jen uh, to follow her and join any of her yoga classes. So stay tuned for that email. Um, and thank you very, very much to Nancy for joining us all the way from Dominica. <laughs> and thank you for Jen for joining us and for hopping on to lead this incredible retreat. We can't wait to have you and, and for you to host the incredible yoga classes at uh, Jungle Bay and Dominica. Are you there still, Jen? <laughs> Excellent. Well, oh, there you are. <laughs> Thank you everyone else for joining from all different parts and for sticking with us. I really hope that you learned something about Dominica. It's an off the beaten path, kind of hidden away secret gem that not a lot of people know about or know how to pronounce or <laughs> know, you know, what, what is, what's going on there. So it was really great to be able to share um, all of the, the aspects of Dominica and why it's special. And yeah, hopefully you'll be able to discover it for yourself soon. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day or evening from wherever you are in the world. And I'll be in touch soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>